Hello and welcome to the introduction of the Nest Genie. During these training videos you'll see the power customization of the Genie to control any device via IR, RST32 or TCP. We'll also be seeing how easy it is to design custom GUIs specific for the system installed. So what is the Genie? The Genie is more than just a universal remote control. It is a full automation controller that can enhance your lifestyle and tie all your AV security and automation systems into one system customizable solution. Sure we can get rid of all the remote controls and replace it with a GUI um, generated under any smart device such as an iPhone or iPad, but it can even go a little bit further than that. Imagine a system where you could just put in DVD into a player um, the, without pushing any remote controls hit the play button on a DVD player and the system will automatically pick it up for the genie to say ah you want to watch a movie and that may include dimming the lights shutting curtains maybe move pulling the rejector down turning the plasma TV onto the right AV channel or whatever you need it to do no fuss no pile of remotes sit down watch the TV it couldn't be any simpler than that So let's have a look at the hardware on the Genie. First of all, looking at the front of the Genie, um, starting from the left, we have a power, 12 volt DC power pack. The system comes supplied with this, so there's no need to um, any additional purchases, it's included. We then have the reset switch. The reset switch can do a couple of things for you. If you just um, insert something in there so it's not easily um, knocked, you can insert something in, hit the reset button uh, for a short period, and what that will do is it'll be as if you power the unit down, power it back up again. However, if you push the reset button and hold it in for a prolonged time until the status light flashing, what that will do is reset the entire unit as if it was back to factory default. We then got the Ethernet port. The Ethernet port, which also supplies power over Ethernet, so if you do have a power over Ethernet switch, you don't even need the 12 volt supply that comes with it. You can power up over the Ethernet with one simple cable. And having an Ethernet port, this is how we communicate to it from our, typically from our iPad or iPhone um, via the wireless LAN into the Ethernet port. But of course, um, we can also control anything via TCP IP. Um, if your equipment can handle that, we can also handle it as well. We've then got the status LED. This normally lights up to tell you that we've got power on the unit. We can also, when we're searching for a unit to program, it can hit a locate button and that locate button will cause the status light to flash. Um, and also while there's an activity occurring, whether we're sending a message out via the IR, RS232, TCP, that will give a flash to give us an indication that we are doing some activity on the Genie. We then turn the genie around the back. What we see is a row of terminal blocks with the first three being our bi-directional RS-232. So now we can control anything via RS-232 on the genie. We have two general purpose I.O. ports. There's actually a third one. One of them's internally in the unit, which we'll have a look at later. But these two external ones, they can be programmed either as an analog input, a digital input, or a digital output. Now these are great. For example, that I used before where we can have a voltage or a sense output of the DVD. Perhaps we could feed that into one of these inputs, so it will then pick that up and say, ah, oh, you want to watch the DVD? It will pick that up and, as I was saying, and then generate a macro that you've programmed inside the Genie. That's just one small example of what you could use that for. We also have two general purpose relay outputs. Dry contacts, typically rated at 2 amps at 30 volts, and they can be used for anything from um, maybe lifting a plasma lift, hydraulic lift um, to lift the plasma out, opening and shutting curtains, whatever you wish to. Maybe switching fans on and off in an equipment rack if it gets too hot, hot in the equipment rack. They're just some examples of where you may want to use those relay outputs. We then have a 12 volt DC out. If you're powering the Genie up via the plug pack, via TCP, um, via power over Ethernet, the TCP port, well you might want to have this um, output to maybe feed 12 volts into the relay contacts. So it's a nice simple way of getting um, the 12 volts out 
into the relay contacts to be able to control um, or switch a voltage, um, low voltage through there. We then have um, five IR ports. So we look at the first four, controlled via a typically three and a half mil um, standard jack. We do supply as a separate purchase, single head emitters or dual head emitters. Um, the Genie has got heaps of power out of it, so you can run four dual head emitters without any problems at all. The next port we have, moving along to the right, is the fifth IR output. Now that is a blaster, so you can hold that in front of your equipment rather than putting an, an IR emitter on there. And what that will do is, if you hold that in, that will actually give an IR blasting to a multiple piece of equipment. Great for testing. Internally in the Genie, there's an in excess of 348,000 IR codes. But as Murphy has it, you may come along a piece of equipment that is not one of those 348,000. So you may need to learn that into the Genie itself. That fifth port also works as a learner so you can learn any device um, within that Genie. And we'll have a look at that in a moment and show you how easy it is to learn a device into the Genie. Once you've got your devices uh, controlled, you can then design any GUI you like onto an iPad, iPhone or any other smart device. As part of the uh, Genie, we do supply a full set of uh, templates for free. These um, obviously can be customised, changed to whatever suits your application, but as I said, there is a full set available um, to suit your requirements. You can customise these, to add and delete the ones that you don't need for that project and you're up and running. In addition to these free templates that um, we do supply, um, we have aligned ourselves with Blackman Signature Graphics from the US and we do supply a full set of what we call professional templates, both for the iPad and iPhone. And these are available um, for about $499, uh, available on our website when they link there. Now, keep in mind the free ones that we supply that we previously saw, they are available for a iPad only, where the professional ones are available for an iPhone or iPad. Now, a typical workflow that you may do, and it could be argued it can be done in a slightly different order, is that you install um, the Genie onto a LAN. Using the project editor software that we'll have a look at at a moment, you can configure your hardware that you need to do, what, whether you're going to control something from IR, control it from RSD32, TCP, you program all that accordingly um, with the project editor. <coughs> also from project editor, you can also um, test the device that you want to control. So you don't have to go and program it onto an iPad or an iPhone first. You can test it directly from Project Editor, which makes life a lot easier. We can then go and create some macros, and that can be something simple like assigning a macro to a TV channel um, on a GUI button. For example, channel 72. You don't have to, um, you know, enter a keypad and enter 7.2, you can simply hit the 7.2 logo and we can send a macro off to send those commands. Or it can be something a little bit more advanced that when we hit a button that may be titled watch a movie for example, we can shut the curtains, dim some lights, turn the DVD player on, bring the projector down, turn the, um, turn the screen down, put the projector on, turn the TV to whatever channel you want it to be, um, the AV channel and whatever you like to do. Again, going back to our project editor, we can then design the GUI specifically for the system installed, um, however you want it to look, and we can then build the um, GUIs or export the GUIs, I should say, onto a iPad or iPhone, um, and bingo, you're off and running. Now, once you've got your GUIs there, the typical workflow or connection of the panel will be via uh, the system topology, connect via Wi-Fi, so you've got your wireless um, LAN connecting up to your iPad, connects via TCP into the Genie, and then we can control for exa a device example via IR. If you want to connect more than one um, technology on the system, we can then go and connect from this example, we're still connecting via IR, but in this device we're now connecting via TCP. Alternatively, if we didn't want to connect via TCP, 
we can go and connect via RST32. It is very important to note, that, however, though, if you're connecting more than one device, in other words, one technology, either RS-232 or TCP, we can only connect one device or one script device if using the two-way feedback with the new version 1.4. So on the example we had before, if we're talking to, for example, the SM1 via TCP, we can't connect via RS-232 on the one genie. If we're connecting via RS-232, we can't connect a TCP onto another device. In those examples, you would have to use two genies, one for TCP, one for RS-232. Now, if this, in this example here, if this plasma was in a different room, further away, where all your other equipment may be in your um, equipment rack, then the easiest way to extend or to add is to add a second genie or third genie, fourth genie, one for each TV or one for each device that you want to control at a remote location. We can connect, easily connect more than one device, uh, more than one genie on the uh, network. So that's the easiest way rather than doing IR extenders. Just put on the LAN and um, we're good to go. Now to take full advantage of the version 1.4, which allows for the two-way feedback of the genie, there's a few things that you need to uh, do or make sure that it has been done previously. The first one is yet to require version 1.4 project editor software. If you've only got 1.3, then of course you need to update. The next thing is we need to do is in two steps is you need to update the firmware inside the Genie itself. And it needs to be version 1.093 or higher. And after you do the firmware update, you then need to update the web pages. Um, within the genie. Now once they've been updated, the third step is to make sure to download from the iTunes App Store is to make sure that you've got Nest Touch app version 1.4.7 or higher. That's available on the iTunes for free. Um, so they're the three steps that you need to do to update the genie or to update your project to make sure that you take advantage of the two-way feedback. We'll be looking at the uh, in the next video of um, just showing you how to update those videos.